This question gives us a continuous time signal x of t, and we're asked to find the energy. So to find the energy, we would take the integral of x of t squared. So the energy of the signal is the integral from minus infinity to infinity x squared of t dt. So we can integrate it piecewise from minus infinity across all of these different regions. So we can say that's equal to the integral from minus infinity to minus 2 plus the integral from minus 2 to minus 1 plus the integral from minus 1 to 1 plus the integral from 1 to 2, plus the integral from 2 to infinity. Now, this bit and this bit, that's this segment and this segment, these are just zeros. So we don't need to include those. So we can remove those. And This bit and this bit are the same, and this bit and this bit are the same, so we can make our um, integration much easier by simply saying it's twice the integral from minus 2 to minus 1, that's this bit here, x squared of t dt, plus twice the integral from minus 1 to 0 x squared of t dt. And x squared, we can simply take from the diagram. It's a and b. So I can replace the first x squared with a squared, and the second x squared with b squared. So that gives me 2 a squared t from minus 2 to minus 1 plus 2 b squared t from minus 1 to 0. And if you substitute the limits, you get ex equals 2 to a squared plus b squared. So that's your final answer for part a. So we simply took the values, the amplitudes of x, and we squared them, and we integrated from minus infinity to infinity. Now, for part b, the same signal, and it says represent it using elementary functions. So the unit step, ramp, and impulse. Now looking at this signal, there aren't any impulses, there aren't any ramps. There's just a few step functions. So there's a, a unit step here. So that's, it has an amplitude of A. So it's A. write it like this, x of t equals a times a unit step of t plus 2, because it starts at t equals minus 2. So it's shifted to the left. We then have a second step here. And that step starts at t equals minus 1, and its amplitude is the difference of those two. So it's b minus a. So plus b minus a times a unit step of t plus 1. Now, we have another step right here. That brings it down, so it's negative. Its amplitude is the same, b minus a. And it starts at t equals 1, so it's u of t minus 1. And my final step function is this one here that goes down 
at t equals 2. And its amplitude is a again. So it's minus a unit step of t minus 2. So that's my x of t all in one expression. So that's what you would need for a full mark for this question. The next question asks for the Fourier transform of x of t. So we need to represent x of t in the frequency domain. So if you look at x of t, not only is it a combination of four step functions, we can also think of it as um, a combination of two rectangular functions. So it's it looks like it's a rectangular function like that added to a rectangular function like that. So this rectangular function has a width of 2 and an amplitude of a and this has a width of sorry this has a width of 4 because it's from minus 2 to 2 and this has a width of 2 from minus 1 to 1 and it has an amplitude of b minus a even though it looks like it has an amplitude of b it actually has an amplitude of b minus a because we're adding them together so when you add b minus a to a you end up with b so we need to add these two in the time domain and that using the linearity property is the same as adding the spectra in the frequency domain so let me write this as x of t so this is a rect function rectangular pulse and this is a rectangular pulse and each of these we need to specify correctly so this is a rectangular pulse of amplitude a and this is a rectangular pulse of amplitude b minus a Okay, now, what goes in the denominator here is the width of the rectangular function. So in this case, the width of the rectangular function is 4, so we divide by 4, and here the width of the rectangular function is 2. So that's my signal in the time domain. Now, the question asks for the signal in the frequency domain. Find x of omega. So we still need to um, find the Fourier transform. So we can make use of a, a um, Fourier transform pair. So we know that um, a rect function with a period t has a Fourier transform of t times sinc t omega over 2. Okay, so in this case t would be equal to 4 and in this case t would be equal to 2. So I can now rewrite the signal x in the frequency domain like this. I can say, well, x of omega equals a times, well, let me write it properly. So it's 4a sinc t what I want to do, so that, that 4 is that. And I now need to put that in there. So t is 4, so I have 4 omega over 2. And here I have the same, 2, b minus a. So that is that. 
and it's sync 2 omega over 2. So I can write that as omega, and 4 over 2 I can write as 2 omega. So now that is my final answer. The question was, find the Fourier transform. I could have carried out a long integration to find this, but all I needed to do was use the linearity property to show that the spectrum of x of t is simply the sum of two sinc functions. That's a sinc function, and that's a sinc function. And I did that by um, breaking down my signal into two rectangular functions. So that's what you would need for the full mark for part c. Now, for the next part, for the final part, plot x of omega. So let's bring x of omega down here. So what we're trying to plot is that. So it's a sum of two sinc functions. So each sinc function, so what you're, you're superimposing two sinc functions. Each sinc function will have zero crossings. So the zero crossings for um, the first sinc function will be at plus minus n pi over 2. And for the second one, the zero crossings will be at plus minus n pi. So when you superimpose them, you'll have zero crossings every n pi over 2. So it doesn't need to be an accurate sketch. It's enough simply to sketch it like this. So we'd need, for the full mark, you'd need to have pi over 2 and minus pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. And you'd need to label this point correctly. So that would be 4a plus 2b minus a. So 4a plus 2b minus 2a is 2 into a plus b. So 2 into a plus b, that's the amplitude there. So to get the full mark, you would need to have that, you would need to have that, you'd need to have these correct zero crossings, and you'd need to have a shape that looked something like a sink or two sinks superimposed. Okay, so that's your final answer for part D. This section asks for the energy of the signal x of omega. And we know from Parsable's theorem that the energy can be calculated in the time domain or the frequency domain. So we can say the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x of omega squared d omega is equal to the integral of x squared of t dt with a scaling factor of 1 over 2 pi. So we already found this integral because that's the energy that we found from part a of this question. So we already found that to be 2 into a squared plus b squared. So we can simply write the energy that we're trying to find as this multiplied by 2 pi, so 4 pi. So that's our final answer for part E.